What's up guys, Drifty here from Driftwood Gaming and this is a special request RPG Maker Envy tutorial for Sinistar. He wants to know how to make an item that's got charges on it. So I've made the Seraph Stone for him and it's going to be an item that restores the, the party back to life. Uh, and it has charges on it. When it reaches zero charges, it's no longer, it doesn't become destroyed, but it doesn't work any longer. It doesn't serve its purpose uh, of restoring the party back to life. This is going to be like a story based item. Uh, and you could do something like this. It's very easy. I'll, I'll show it to you first and then I'll show you how to make it. So we've got some dead party members. We're going to use our Seraph Stone in battle here. We're going to restore uh, our party members back to life. And you see they've all got restored back to life. And if we try to use the item again, you can see that it says zero charges now. So let's uh, have somebody die just to show you that um, it doesn't bring anybody back to life if it has zero charges. Let him, okay, there we go. Now let's use the item again now that it's got zero charges. And we can see that it's the stone shines for a moment, but nothing happens. So it doesn't destroy the item. You still have it. All you really have to do is control variables and add to that variable and it'll work again. Uh, but that's basically it. So let's take a look at how I made it. It's very simple. It's an easy concept. So what we're going to do is add the item you want to add, whatever you want to call it. I called it a Seraph Stone. I uh, gave it like this little pearl icon and we're going to have to use one variable to control. Now the catch to this item is it's sort of story based so in, in the special request it was like part of the story that just gets upgraded. So uh, this item is one of these items where you can only have one of each type for each variable that you allocate because the charges are stored in a variable so if you had two of these stones they would both be using the same charges so that's, that's the catch to this item but it fits for Sinistar's storyline. So how you would do this is give it whatever description you want but you probably want to reference the variable that you're going to be using in the description so the player can see when they look at the item how many charges it's got left so whatever variable number you use you just go slash V and then put that number inside the brackets and let the player know that there's that many charges remaining so if that variable's got one if that variable set to one then it's gonna say one charges remaining um, we're gonna say it's not consumable whatever uh, item type uh, price you want, scope, um, basically you you know you can have this set to one uh, one ally um, but since it's going to be restoring all allies back to life you might as well scope to all allies. Occasion always or battle screen completely up to you. Animation it's up to you. Certain hit it wouldn't really matter but I would just go with certain hit so that evasion doesn't come into play. Doesn't need a damage type but what we're going to do is have it call a common event. So Right now, let's jump over to our common events, find a blank one, call it whatever you want, probably give it the same name as the item. doesn't need any trigger or anything, but what we're going to do is create a conditional branch. So in that conditional branch, we're going to reference that variable that we're using. So we're using um, 74 here for revive count, and we're going to say if revive count is greater than or equal to 1, and we're also going to check uh, create an else branch. So once we've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to change, uh, do a change state, and we're going to do fix to the entire party, and we're going to do the operation of remove, and we're going to check the state of knockout. Now you could do this uh, with a, an item that removes poison from the whole party, or an item that, uh, you know, you can basically make this item do whatever you want. You could have it deal damage even. You can even force an action here. So this is just a template. You can change this up completely, completely to work in your game. So what we're doing in this case is we're restoring the whole party back to life. Um, you could even do uh, HP recover if you want after this. So we're going to remove knockout. Then what we're going to do is we're going to control that variable and we're going to subtract one. So you select that same variable and you do operation of sub for subtract. And we're going to do a constant of one. Uh, on the else handler, what you're going to do is show text as your fail safe. When they use it, they, they know it doesn't work because you got the text. The stone shines bright for a moment, but nothing seems to happen, and that's pretty much it. So we take the number of that common event, we go to our items, and we're going to edit the traits here, the effects, go to other on the bottom common event, and select that common event. That's pretty much all there is to it. Now you can award that item, and when you award that item, keep in mind that all variables start at zero. Um, so if you want to add charges to it, when you award that item with the change items, 
uh, you have to also control the variable that it's referencing, in my case 74, and give it some charges. And this also lets you reward the player later on however you want in the storyline by maybe they, they visit an altar that's a side quest and that altar recharges the orb and adds three charges to it or something like that. And you can even upgrade the stone later on in however you see fit. But this is a basic template for you guys to use in your quests and your storylines and you can have it do whatever you want. So Sinistar, this special request was for you, my friend. Thank you so much for your special request. If you have any special requests, put them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel here. I do lots of RPG Maker MB tutorials. You can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Driftwood Gaming. Um, yeah, so thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video.